Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a post-apocalyptic game. I love that theme called Last Aurora. In this game, the players are cobbling together a, a, a convoy, an, an armored truck, and hauling some things behind them and racing across a frozen tundra in order to make it to the ship that is going to be leaving very soon, the Aurora. It's the last one leaving after this ship is gone. We are stuck in this uh, this uh, frozen wasteland and have to fend for ourselves. So that's what the players are doing. Along the way, they're going to be ambushed by raiders and uh, they're called, you know, wolves, war wolves and things like that. And uh, you're going to be gathering food and fuel, ammunition, uh, increasing the power you have, the characters that come along with you trying to get the most fame points. I'm not sure why they're called fame points, but uh, I guess survival points would have been a little more logical. But anyway, that's what you're doing. So what do I think of the game? Is it interesting? Does it do justice to this cool theme? Let's take a look at how the game works. I'm going to give you an overview. It's a fairly complicated game. And then I'll see you on the other side. In the game, the players are going to be traversing this frozen landscape, trying to make it all the way over here to this ship, the Aurora. Before it advances, it does so at the end of every round, and it leaves. After it does that, or someone gets to it, the game is over and we're going to count fame points. You're going to get fame points from a few different things. You'll get some from your player board, uh, which I have one right here. So you'll get some fame points on this tracker here. You'll get a fame point for every item you have, every object you never used. And then you're going to get some fame points depending on whether someone made it to the ship or not. You'll score your characters that are not contaminated or perhaps part of your convoy that is not damaged. You'll get extra points for that, okay? So the game is going to be played until one of those two things happen. Every round is going to have five phases. Let's take a look at those. They're right here on every player's player board. And obviously I'm only showing you, this is set up for three, but I'm showing you a, uh, just one player's board and some of the cards in front of that because of, uh, obviously, restrictions, space restrictions. So we've got phase one, exploration, in which the players are going to, using this turn order here and that arrow telling us that we go that way, so yellow, then green, then red in this case, we are going to... Do the exploration phase. What does that entail? It entails uh, exhausting your characters in order to interact with these cards down here. The value above the space is the necessary strength of the character you are exhausting. You can spend food to bump up that value momentarily, by the way. And then you'll either take a new character, add them to your caravan, perhaps uh, enhance your caravan with a new attachment, a new weapon perhaps go and take some resources from a place, such as fuel and ammunition. Uh, maybe you'll simply add some more uh, containers to your caravan, to your convoy, like this one, giving you more room to store things. Right now you've got a truck and a container behind that, being hauled behind that. You have to, on every little square of those locations, such as this one here, you need to store everything. Characters take up room, uh, food and fuel and ammo, they all take up food. The truck you have can also be upgraded. There are no new trucks out here, but they'll show up. And uh, that, entail, that, that will change the speed of your caravan, and it will change how much it can haul behind it, okay? So there you go, that's exploration. Once we've done with, uh, we've done that, then we go to the rest phase, in which all the characters you used that became exhausted, they move from exhausted to the rest zone. Anybody who was in the rest zone is, zone is now active again. And again, you can spend food to sort of hurry part of that process to go from exhausted to rest, okay? Uh, you've got after that the movement phase. The movement phase happens in this direction, so red, then green, then yellow, and you are going to be allowed to spend fuel in order to move. We've got locations along the way here that are going to give you something or make something happen if you're the first one to reach them. So you'll gather some fuel over here, gain an object, uh, someone will become uh, contaminated, and that simply is denoted by you grabbing one of these and putting them on a person, making them weaker, okay? 
and uh, again trying to race to the back. Once the movement is done, you'll up update this track right here to show the new order. Whoever's farther ahead, closer to the ship, will be at the front of this line where red is now. Once that's done, we go to the fire weapons phase. During that phase, you are going to first see if anyone is ambushed. Now, baddies are going to show up from this deck as it's used to replenish this line here. And if they show up, they're going to then ambush players in that air and in the area of the board, be it the bay here or the coast or the valley, where the player farther ahead is. They're going to ambush everyone in that area. Once that's done, then the players may attack back. And then once that's done, if those baddies are still around, then they are going to attack the players. Okay, that's outside of the ambush. The ambush happens just the one time, the first time they show up. And then once that's done, we go to the end of round in which we check if the game is over. We are going to update a couple of things, okay? And we move on. The ship, for example, moves along, etc. So there you go. That's the general flow of the game. Uh, the exploration phase is pretty straightforward. You've kind of seen the sort of things that can happen. I will explain that, for example, if someone goes to the watchtower here by exhausting one of their characters... You can take everything from one side or the other. So I might take both of these and store that. I really don't have the room for it right now, but I could. And then once someone takes the other side, then this card will go away. And every time a card here goes away, you'll scoot everything down and flip over a new one. If another container like this one shows up, simply populate it with the necessary things and uh, you are good to go. Now, every one of these locations also has above it some symbols. And you may, before or after you interact with the card below it, do that ability. So you can heal your caravan, for example, for two ticks here. You can heal some radiation from the character that is visiting that location. You can gather some uh, ammunition or some food, but you do get shot doing it. So you'll have to use one of these tokens here. And again, I'll bring this out to mark a location that is damaged and that's what repair does okay repair removes that so you may store something there again so there is that this one over here uh it's the first card that shows up so if you go there not only is it quite expensive but you're also going to be irradiated if you do that the character that went there all right uh so there it is also again special abilities on these cards like the leader having a special ability your co-pilot having a movement ability helping you catch up uh, in the game if you fall quite far behind. So once that's all done, like I said, the second phase then is resting. So once I've done this and this, then these characters will go there. Now let's say I uh, you know acquired more characters, they will then show up. I, I think they show up in the rest zone, and then they eventually shift over to the active zone. You can spend food and hurry this along, okay? Once that's done, then in the next one, the movement phase, we are going to take a look at our truck right here, a little close up on that. You can see the truck has three spaces, a space here for weapons. Uh, you can't put anything in there. It can only hold a damage token. And if it is damaged, well, you, then you don't have those weapons. And then it has a speed, speed of two in this case. Over here, it tells you how much it can haul behind it. Two cards of, you know, containers, whatever it may be, behind this truck here. Now, this space is also tagged to let you know that can only hold a person, the driver. So, be aware of that. You can't just store fuel or something in there. Now, the truck, during the movement phase, you can spend fuel to move that many spaces. If you have extra fuel, you could spend it and move a little bit more as well. So, you know, if it's yellow's turn, I could go one, two, spend that fuel, move a couple of spaces along. Maybe we had uh, green moved three, they showed up here, they grabbed some fuel, and then red uh, moved uh, just two as well, let's say. And we would update this turn order to make sure that green is at the front of the line now, because they are ahead of the whole thing. Now after that, again, we have the combat, which is the most complex part of the game. Some baddies are going to show up in this deck, okay? And I'll just go ahead and look through it to show, uh, to, to find one of those baddies. Like this character here, for example. They're going to show up at some point. Let's say they end up there, and these characters are by now. We've passed some of these places, and we are all here. 
Uh, we've made it to there, okay? That's what it looks like. All the players obviously have passed all these locations. There's also some shortcuts on the board. We're not going to worry about that. So we've made it there. Uh, these characters just showed up. They're going to ambush the front area, meaning the coast. We have players here in the coast, so they're going to ambush players. We are going to just read what it says. In this case, it says each convoy receives one damage in the top of the convoy. What's the top of the convoy? Anything that would be above the truck or above the containers. Like this. This here is a weapon. It goes attached to the top of a card like that and gives you a new weapon. You'd have to damage this according to that ambush, okay? And then the players can choose to attack. So let's take a look at this weapon here and uh, let's assume we're going to be attacking these guys here. You pull one of these cards. This card tells you the damage that you need to do. For a two-player game, we need to just fill in these two. For a three-player game, which is what we're playing, this one's also necessary to be hit to take these guys out, these war wolves, right here. All right? So how do I do this? You are going to check a weapon, that one there. Do you have ammunition? Indeed you do. Fine, you can put it there to remind you or do whatever you want. Uh, and then you are going to draw a card from this deck here, and we are going to check the player side. What's the strength of the weapon? My weapon is a 1 in this case. It tells me right there. What's this card say? Well, unfortunately, it's a miss. At strength 1. Now, if this was a later weapon, a better weapon, perhaps even this weapon right here, this mounted machine gun, then I would have hit them for 2. When I hit them for 2, I will do 2 damage to them. I'm going to mark that damage with these tokens. So, I did 1 two damage and I also will make sure that I mark that I have done some damage to them also my uh, my uh, glory track here is gonna go up one as well for that this will continue happening like I said you can fire multiple weapons everybody gets a chance to shoot uh, and then ultimately once they are defeated someone's gonna get this card itself you flip that over and it's gonna be something special Ooh, someone's gonna get that and then the other players are going to get some uh, some of these items. These items, by the way, are all sorts of little uh, additions, things that can help you out. There's actually not that many different kinds, but they'll do different things to help you catch up, uh, keep up, uh, you know, hit harder, that sort of thing. And again, they're points at the end of the game. So that's how that works. And uh, that's generally what's happening in the game. There's actually a lot of little moving parts. I hope this all makes sense. I glossed over a little bit of the combat because it's, it's just too much. There's too many ins and outs, okay? But that should give you an idea of what's going on. Like when they attack you, you know, you'd have to do this flip over a card, check the enemy side, and then check where they hit. So you use the front of one card, the back of another. Very cool mechanism. So there you go. Uh, that's the game, everybody. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me tell you how this feels, how this plays, what I liked or didn't like about it. So there you go, that is Last Aurora, okay? Let's go ahead and talk about it. Before anything else, I want to tell you the things that I wish there were more of in the game, okay? This is what my... I like this game quite a bit, quite a bit. There are a few things I think are weaknesses in the package, though. So let me mention those right now, and then I'll, I'll hopefully fold them into my discussion. So things that I wish there were more of. I wish there were more diverse items. These items right here. They repeat quite a bit. It's a small deck anyway, and there's not that many different ones. A little more diversity there would have been a little more uh, fun. As you as you draw those, you discover something new. Uh, you you'll, you'll see repeats in the game. There's no there's no way you don't. Okay. I wish there were more scoring opportunities. The fame points and where they come from is uh, fairly limited. There's there's not that many sort of aspects that you can score from. This is not a point salad by any means, and I don't necessarily want that. But more things from which to score would have felt a little more satisfactory at the wrap-up, at the end. I wish there were more. There was more combat. Uh, combat is the one aspect of the game that has the most rules. It's also uh, one thing that doesn't really happen that frequently. There's not that much combat in the game. There you will deal with a baddie, it will ambush you, you'll, the players together will probably wipe them out. 
And that's it. And that happens a few times, five times, six times throughout the game, maybe. Uh, maybe a little more, but that, that's basically it. So it doesn't happen really that much. Yet it comes bundled with a lot of rules, okay? So those are my main drawbacks. Having said all that, let's dig into it. Theme, I think, is spectacular. They did a great job setting a game in a post-apocalyptic post world, but also not having it feel generic. It does not feel like just post-apocalyptic window dressing. This is a specific world. They are making specific strong choices here. The race aspect, the encountering things along the way, all works really, really well. I like that a lot. The aesthetics are also very good. Great artwork all over the place. The way you put together the caravan carts looks neat uh, you know, in front of you on the table. Characters are well illustrated. They're interesting. Uh, I do have a couple of issues with some of the... Uh, like minor iconography problems. For the most part, they're really good. There's just a couple of things. Like, for example, gaining um, radiation looks like this symbol here, radiation. Losing radiation, meaning healing, is this symbol. It's on the board. This symbol with a little red uh, plus symbol above it, right next to it, right here in this corner, which looks like more radiation. So maybe this symbol crossed out would have gotten that, that point across a little more clearly, a little more strongly, okay? The uh, replay value is excellent. This is a double-sided board. Did not show you the other side, but it's an there's another side with even more going on in it. Uh, you are going to set up this deck of cards. The encounter cards here are set up at the beginning of the game. They're randomized. Some cards don't go into it if you're playing with fewer than four. Uh, and so there's going to be a lot of replayability. The way uh, things show up, the order, the characters you end up uh, bringing along on your journey... There's quite a bit here to get into. It's going to be very replayable. The game arc uh, that has a lot of pressure. There's a great sort of ticking clock uh, aspect to it. Now, you don't automatically lose, I suppose, if no one makes it to that ship. So there is that. It's a little bit of an illusion. But you have to gauge, because the scoring is quite distinct, whether... Uh, someone does make it to the ship or does not. There's, you know, you're trying to keep your people free from radiation in one scenario and your caravan fixed up in the other scenario. So you, you have to manage, you know, you have to manage that and figure out which of the two ways is the game going to end, okay? So that's good. There's also a very strong catch-up mechanism in here. Uh, a, few, a few instances of that. So if you're someone who is put off by strong catch-up mechanisms... That might bother you. I don't care. I, I thought it was fine. The game has a nice dynamic feel to it, and, and that didn't bother me. But it's there. The ease of play is the one part that it gets a little bit of a ding. There's a lot going on, a lot of phases. Uh, this is nice here that they give you a breakdown of the turn order, but it's lacking a little definition. For example, step four, fire weapons. There's a lot missing there. Okay, they ambush you. You then fire on them, then then they fire on you. I mean, there's there's um it's missing some granularity. So there is that, and the game is is a decent amount to digest. So it's not that easy to play. A little bit more help along the way would have been appreciated. Uh, and then lastly, tactics, strategy, luck. Yeah, there's a decent amount here to to do. The luck of the of the cars as they show up is fine. You deal with that. You're encountering things on the road. But then the tactics of who you exhaust, what uh, you bring along on the journey, how you move. Do you stock up on fuel and just spend a bunch of fuel and try to push ahead? Do you make sure that by, by doing that, you're probably giving up something, though? You might give up, uh, for example, ammunition. Or you might, uh, you know, have to run with fewer characters. If you do that, and there are fewer people on to, on your uh, in your convoy uh, riding with you, you have fewer moments in which you can explore. So there's a lot of ways to play the game. Uh, and, you know, that, that path that you pick for yourself is going to be different uh, depending on what you do. The shortcuts also on the board, you can only take those shortcuts if you have specific uh, vehicles, if you have specific trucks that can take those shortcuts. That's another consideration. Do I want to bother with that? Do I just go the long way and simply pump a bunch of fuel into it? Okay, so there you go. Having mentioned the issues I had at the top, a few niggling problems, but hopefully I'm getting across to you how fantastic this game is. The, the I, I hopefully I'm coming across as passionate because I really like the theme. 
I think it's a strong game. I think it's a great mixture of clear mechanisms, a, uh, you know, a, a Euro-style core to the game with then all of these things around it that make it feel very thematic, very engaging. Moments of luck, moments of, uh, you know, turns of, of, uh, turns of uh, action and, 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 and uh, unexpected moments and things like that, right? The, so, so it's all coming together into a great package. And I really like it. Like I said, nice replayability too. So it's going to keep it coming back to the table. I believe there's also more content coming. And I know that there is also an upgrade pack available. So you could get that as well. Uh, the pieces here don't quite match what the look is of the little symbols on the board. But it's not too big a deal, honestly. So there you go. Having said all that, man, this is cool. This is going to get an 8.5 out of 10 for me. That does get it a seal of excellence. And again, I think if in eventual expansions they shore up some of those little issues I have, this could go even higher. So there you go. This is great stuff. Last Aurora, I highly recommend if you are someone that likes your gameplay designs tight, but you want a cool theme and you want a lot happening along the way. So that is it for me, everybody. 8.5, once again, seal of excellence for Last Aurora. My name is Z Garcia. I'm going to see you on the next one.